All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the fourth match. This Collegiate Star League matchup between University of California, Irvine and University of Washington. Spawning in the lower right hand corner of the map. He is faced with a tall order, a tall task to say the least. He needs to bring this home for his team if he can from University of California, Irvine, the pink Protoss player. It is power. Spawning up in the top left is somebody that really needs no introduction in the world of the CSL, and he's actually playing as Zerg. It is going to be Kawaii Rice playing for University of Washington, and um, you know what? I mean, Kawaii Rice, obviously, you know, the face of the University of Washington team, and Power actually is the coordinator of UC Irvine and a Grand Masters random player is he? and he's on the fxo north america lineup oh man well God. i said it's a tall order but it seems like he's got the credentials to uh to and he's random <laughs> that is so badass i mean I, I always like oh i'm gonna play random and you know get good with random but it's it's so challenging to just you know queue up for any match and just know that you have potentially nine different matchups coming your way um, and to get Grand Masters doing that is something that I cannot really imagine. So Power, um, you know, just a phenomenal player. And, he, you know, we saw him last week, and he was just looking so solid. So Kawhi Rice, uh, you know, not playing as his native race, he's also going to have a pretty tall order here. Absolutely. I mean, considering the fact that, that Power has gone random, spawned as Protoss, Kawhi wasn't aware of that fact. So he's actually got a delayed uh, spawning pool here. But... Uh, looked like he could have had an opportunity to drop that hatcher down. Of course, he wouldn't have been at the minerals required for that. But, you know, Power's advantage here is that he could just drop down that Nexus much quicker than Kawhi's going to be able to drop down his hatchery. And I wouldn't even be shocked. Oh, he is not going to get the pylon down. But delaying that hatchery ever so slightly, forcing that spawning pool out just slightly later than Kawhi would have liked to build it if he knew he was a Protoss player. Power's definitely got an advantage here in the early stage of this game. Yeah, absolutely. Power... Um, pulling no punches here, like you're saying. Just get, getting that Nexus first, you know, getting that Nexus down before the Zerg's Hatchery, already you're winning. You're already at a very slight advantage, and when your player is good as power, those are the kind of advantages that propel you into, you know, getting bigger advantages in the mid-game. So, he's probably feeling pretty comfortable right now getting, uh, you know, PVZ on Belshir, Vestige. Um, I just feel like a solid map overall and you know PVZ is just feeling so much more comfortable now Doom with that mothership core there's just so many more options that you have you can do those pressures that you wanted to always do in Wings of Liberty and now you can just recall or you can use time warp and they can be even more effective pressures just so many more options and I feel like uh, somebody like power especially you know, somebody that plays random is going to really like that overall utility of the Mothership Core. Absolutely. And, you know, the cost-efficient cost efficient nature of Protoss Army just makes it, you know, that much better to have, especially when you can just use a, a Warcraft 3 teleport to bring all of your units back to the main Yeah, base. it's but basically teleport scroll. In, in this event, too, I also like the addition of the Photon Cannon in the matchup for the Protoss player. It makes defending against, say, like an early aggression much easier. Uh, mutalisks, any any type of aggression that the Zerg player is going to be throwing at you, it better be coming in full force and it better be really damaging your economy because with that Photon Cannon, you know, with the addition of, say, centuries into an army, you can really deflect and defend so simply as a Protoss player. But I'm curious to see if he's going to go for any type of early Stargate play. I know that that's I think he has this pylon right behind his main, or right behind his main mineral line is basically uh, just asking for a Stargate. <laughs> and he's actually going to place it where you wouldn't expect it, right next to the Cybernetic Core. I love it. Yeah. Uh, this, you know, he saw the Overlord right there. Uh, this Overlord coming in, Kawaii, clearly not skimping on, you know, his Overlord placement, but he's gonna miss that Stargate just barely, no. and then he's gonna turn back. No. Oh, Kawaii, that's, and that is the strength of placing your Stargate in such a position. Um, you know, don't have it in your main base, don't have it, you know, tucked away in your natural mineral line, just have it right there. Uh, you know, kind of in plain sight, more or less, but at the same time, Kawaii's not going to see it. It's quite clever, I do have to say. You know, oftentimes you'll you'll see Zerg players try to float in Overlords from from the top area as well. I know that that's uh, you know something I've seen as in a Terran matchup at least, but none, uh, no Overlords in position here for Kawaii to scout it out. He must have seen that pylon in the back of the base and thought the same thing we did. Like, oh, that's definitely going to be where he's going to place that tech down. He's yeah. going to hide in that Overlord in the lower right to potentially scout that out later. 
Yeah, dead, absolutely. And it is actually going to be Phoenixes here uh, from power to start things off. Curious, yep. we're not seeing the Oracle, but you know, Phoenixes still can be very effective, can force out a, a different unit composition from your Zerg opponent. You know, we see Quad going for Roaches here, but Roaches don't hit up. That's not going to be the case. He could potentially force Hydralis out here, could potentially force Mutas out, but uh, Power is actually going to be posturing out here with a Stalker, doing a little bit of aggression in the early stages. I am uh, pretty intrigued overall by Power's play. If I had to take a guess, you see there's a probe kind of hanging out outside of the third base. The Stalker's rejoining with it. There we go. The pylon's going down. He's Chrono Boosting plus one on his Forge, and he's getting three additional gateways as well as a Robo. So the Robo is his transition, but he wants to do uh, four gate Zealot plus one pressure here with Mothership Core. He's only gotten one Phoenix. That's it. He's only just going to get that one Phoenix for now. And there we go. He is going to transition into Void Ray Colossus. So this is Power's version of, I'm going to put on early pressure, do some harassment, and in the background, I'm going to build that unkillable army that you all hate. That's pretty much, mm. I feel like, what he's saying right now. Yeah, I definitely hate it. That's for sure. But I really like the fact that po uh, Powers built this proxy pylon out into the, I guess we're going to call it the northeastern portion of the map. He's going to be seeing the fact that Quai is trying to take this early fourth base, which is actually a good decision from Quai in this situation. You see that Phoenixes, you think, okay, maybe he's actually going to go up for a lot more Phoenixes. What do Phoenixes not hit? Bases. They don't attack the yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, but this is the real, um, you know, this is exactly why Protoss is due four gate Phoenix pressure. I personally love this build. I don't do it uh, every single game, but I feel like it is just so effective. If you can get that proxy pylon down, his plus one timing was right on the dot here, um, and it's just so effective. I mean, look at how much uh, Kawhi is forced to deal with this right now. All of his queens not injecting right now, getting transfuses off, no mining at that third base as well, but Kawhi actually doing a really good job holding this off, I have to say. It's unfortunate he lost those queens in this situation, and I mean, this fourth hatchery has brought been brought down to almost half life. So this is definitely gonna be, I mean, the third base was even brought down to even farther than half life. So these, this Eastern side of the map is definitely gonna be a point of contention here for power as this game progresses, but the Void Ray is gonna join in. Definitely not enough here to contend against those four queens though. But like you said yeah. before, no injects are going down for Kawhi Rice anywhere. In the main base, he does have a queen, but other than that, definitely not taking advantage of uh, his, his production as much as he potentially would want to be. I have to say, though, he reacted to that build overall pretty well, and I would say Power is in not the most ideal situation of all time at this point. Fourth base getting attacked now, but these queens are going to be enough to defend it, and that means Kawhi is going to be sitting on four hatch. This third base from Power is now up, and that is... I can't stress how important that is. Uh, if Power hadn't built that third Nexus, he would be in so much trouble right now. Uh, but as is, if he's able to hold on to that third Nexus, he's going to be okay. Um, and it looks like Kawhi, if he's going to be building four more queens, that means uh, he's not going to be putting on any kind of crazy pressure too soon. And a War Prism drop actually coming into the main base, Power is not going to quit with this aggression, but uh, it really hasn't paid off all that much for him. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very very curious of Kwai's decision here for go to go for this mass queen style. You know, we don't see anything to really back this up in the form of, say, Swarm Host, say, you know, a Nidus network to try to get into the main base, try to do some damage with it. If he's going to take that defensive posture and allow power to continue to mass Colossus, continue to make as many units as possible, well, you know, eventually that's that's not going to end up in his favor. And, you know, the one benefit that, that Kwai does have in this situation is that the fact that Twilight Council was just placed down, so that's going to delay uh, that plus two upgrades here from, from power moving forward but he's instead he's just gonna opt for going for ground armor level one yeah so now we see Kawaii yeah. kind of pushing out with this queen roach army and this is really interesting i mean he knows that power is transitioning into void race he knows it he's been playing ladder as zurg in the heart of the swarm probably for quite a while and he just hates the style so much and he knows exactly what's going on so he's developed this sort of funky push it looks like these queens are going to be so slow, uh, and I actually have no idea how effective this is actually going to be, but here comes Kawhi. He has a supply lead, and I don't know, dude, this is uh, this is pretty dicey right now. He did not see the robotic space, so I don't think he's aware of the fact that these queens are actually out in the field, and the roaches are immediately going to drop. I mean, they do nothing against the the, Coloss uh, the Colossus here. The Void Rays are going to clean everything up so fast, and now that these queens have no creep to retreat back on, Chris, they're just going to all fall. Oh, Duke but he does take off the Mothership Core, a small victory, but I mean, trading all your Queens for this is not really worth it. Um, queens are going to work on the Colossus. This is too silly right now. Kawhi's supply is going to dip down here. 
Um, and yeah, 35 think... army supply to the 70 of power, and that fourth base once again below half health. Third base below half health. These are going to be prime targets for power to come and take off. And if he's able to destroy Quai Rice's economy, th there's nothing that that Azur can really do to come back in that situation. I mean, the war person. Yeah, I just have to too. wonder, you know, if Kawhi really felt the need to to do that. Um... I mean, he does end up losing this base. Mutilus end up getting canceled, actually, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, they're building at those larva. But 14 Mutilus in production, that's a nice, healthy number. The Stalker count's looking pretty solid as well, though. Getting Blink and plus two uh, for his ground weapons as well. So he's going to have a nice amount of Stalkers to deal with these Mutilus coming up. In terms of Static D, though, we're looking at pretty much the uh, bare bones right now. Uh, not too much, but... I mean, it may not even have to come to that because here comes Power and he's going to hit another base of Kawaii and Kawaii definitely having to immediately evacuate. Yeah, he's hitting and at the right time here too. Looking at the Stalker count, he's going to have 30 Stalkers to the 19 Mila. Sure, eight more are going to pop, but in addition to having those Void Rays and a oh, single Phoenix in the army, he's going to draw enough attention away that he should be able to crush the Mutilus Force. I mean, looking at the upgrades as well too, Fire Rice just starting that Zerg Flyer Tax level one here. You know, I want to say he was pigeonholed into this composition, but it seems like he chose it consciously. Uh, uh, uh. And he's whittling down the Stalkers, uh, Kawaii is, he's trying to get as many as he possibly can. No, loses a couple of Mutilus to the rally. Every single unit counts right now for Kawaii. He's pulling the drones, this is it. If he falls right now, University of Washington is going to have to try their luck in the fourth qualifier, and I think that's what's going to happen here. Power's army is just going to be too strong. The Mutilus are not going to work out. And uh, I can't believe I'm saying this again, but University of Washington is out of the qualifier. Yep, and it is unlimited power. <laughs> University of California Irvine taking it down 3-1, defeating University of Washington. And man, I mean, what can you do? I guess you don't go with the Queen Roach push, I guess, yeah. at that point in the game. I guess the Queen Roach push just didn't work out. I mean, perhaps if the creep... If he had a you know a more creep spread possibly yeah. for retreating and just overall, I mean even just getting there, Kawhi's queens were so slow to sort of show up to the fight. Uh, the force fields were also good. I mean there was just so many things working against that sort of aggression. So Kawhi, um, it just didn't work out. But I mean I I guess he was in a situation where he felt like. You know, power was just back there powering up with the Colossus Void Ray composition. And you, you just feel this weight on you as Zerg to do something about it. Absolutely. Um, but that's going to be that for our first set here. And uh, we do have more games, so stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Just want to take this moment again to thank our sponsors for this tournament. The March Madness tournament is, of course, Raid Call. NCIX and MSI, if you guys have not checked out the promotions yet on our Facebook page, go ahead and head over there. It's facebook.com slash cstarleague. You can go and win an MSI laptop by making a one-minute video. All you have to do is tell us about your laptop, how terrible it is, and uh, the winner will be chosen uh, basically if you create the best video. So upload your video files to Facebook directly there. It takes little to no time to produce. and. Uh, it's a pretty good opportunity for you, you know, in that, in that regard to, to take home a really freaking sick laptop. Yeah, I mean, it's so simple. So, uh, yeah, submit that video for now, guys. When we come back, it is going to be UMCP, University of Maryland College Park, going up against RPI, fighting for that second spot in this qualifier for that, you know, that coveted playoff spot. And that first spot, of course, going to UC Irvine. Um, and what some would consider at least a mild upset, I would say. So uh, stay tuned, guys. We will be right back.